This is the course Mechanical Vibrations. In this presentation, we will talk about free vibration analysis for a two degrees of freedom on damp system. My name is Carmen Müller Cargill. In this presentation, then, we will study free vibration analysis for two degrees of freedom on damp system. We will have the following learning objectives. We will formulate the equation of motion of a two degree of freedom system. We will identify the mass and the stiffness metrics from the equation of motion. We will compute the eigenvalues or natural frequencies of vibration. We will compute the eigenvectors or modal vectors of the system. And we will determine the free vibration solution using known initial conditions. In this slide, we have an example of a two degree of freedom on damp system. The motion of the system is completely described by the coordinates x1 and x2, which define the position of mass 1 and mass 2 for all times. And we have the external forces f1 and f2 that act on mass 1 and mass 2 respectively. This is the free body diagram of the masses, and let's do the equation of motion. Here we add forces for the first mass, and we have the force of the spring negative, this is the spring 1, and then we have the force of the springs 2, which is the constant of the spring times the relative motion between the two masses, and plus the external force, and that's equals to mass times acceleration of the first mass. In the case of the second mass, we have something similar, we have the force of the spring 3 minus the force of the spring 2 plus the force 2 equals to mass times acceleration of the mass 2. We can write these equations in this form, which we have all the variables that describe the motion of the system in one side of the equation and the external forces in the other side of the equation. And we can write these two equations in terms of one equation in matrix form and the generalized coordinates are x1 and x2. The equation of motion in matrix form is this one right here, and the mass matrix is this one right here. As you see, it's diagonal. The system is decoupled in terms of the inertia. And then we have the stiffness matrix, and as you see, it's a symmetric matrix, and it's coupled. So the motion of this mass is coupled with the motion of this mass. For free vibration, we have that the external forces are equals to zero. Therefore, the force vector is equals to zero. For free vibration, we know that the solution of this type of equation is harmonic and is of this type, where we have the displacement is x times e to the i omega t. And then if we derive this expression, we obtain this expression. And then, and if we derive again, we get that is negative omega squared and the same as the initial solution. If we introduce these expressions into our initial equation of motion, we get this expression right here. And as you see, we can extract the common components on the amplitude of the response times e to the i omega t. If we substitute the values of our matrix, we get this equation right here. This matrix equation leads to two simultaneous equations where, in order to have a solution that is not a trivial solution where x1 and x2 are equals to zero, the terms of the brackets must be equals to zero. And in order to solve these equations, the determinant of this expression equals to zero. That's the same as solving the eigenvalues of the problem and the eigenvalues in this case i named them lambda as you see lambda will be equals to the square of the frequency of the harmonic response the determinant of this matrix is this term over here times this term minus this term times this term we expand this polynomial and get this term right here as you see, this is a quadratic copolynomial where we have to solve for lambda. This equation is called the frequency or characteristic equation because its solution yields the frequency or characteristic value of the system, which are the natural frequency of the system. If we 
use the quadratic equation, we get this expression right here. And we will organize our eigenvalues from the smallest to the greatest. And so will be then the natural frequency will be ordered from the smallest to the greater. Now that we have the natural frequencies of the system, the values for the amplitude x1 and x2 remains to be determined. And those values will be dependent on the natural frequencies omega n1 or omega n2. This leads us to the third step of the process, which is finding the eigenvectors or vibration modes of the system. The values for x1 and x2 corresponding to omega n1 will be denoted as x1 superscript 1 and x2 superscript 1. And the values x1 and x2 corresponding to omega n2 will be denoted as x1 superscript 2 and x2 superscript 2. And these are the so-called vibration modes. Finding the eigenvector of the system can only find a relation between those values because the two equations are linearly dependent. So this equation right here, which is the first equation, will be the same as this second equation. So what we will do is give a value to x1 to increase 1 arbitrarily. It could be 1. And then find the value for x2 to increase 1. And that gives us a relation. So it does not matter which value is we give to the first amplitude. The second amplitude will be always a function of the first amplitude. That just means that the motion between those two are related in the first mode when the system is vibrating to the first natural frequency. If we do the same for the second natural frequency, we will find another relation. It means that these two masses will vibrate with this relation when we have the system vibrating to the second natural frequency. Now that we have found x1 superscript 1 and x2 superscript 2, we will expand the Euler's formula and find the response. As you see here, we have our response will be this vibration mode, but we still have constant A1 and B1, A2 and B2, and those are function of the initial condition. We can write this expression also as a single cosine function with a phase angle. And those values right here will also be function of the initial condition. As you see, this part over here is the response to the first vibration mode, and this part over here is the response to the second vibration mode. The vector equation leads to two scalar equations. If we have a set of initial conditions with x sub s as a vector is equal to the initial displacement and we have the initial velocity, then we will have four equations that will allow us to find the four the constants a1, b1, a2, and b2. The four equation will be the the response of the first mass at time equals to zero, and the velocity of the first mass, which is the derivative of this expression, at time equals to zero, and the second expression evaluated at zero will give us the initial displacement of the second mass, and the derivative of this expression evaluated at zero will give us the initial velocity of the second mass. If we evaluate cosine of zero equals to one and sine of zero equals to zero, that gives us these four equations with the four unknowns. Solving the system of equations, we get our four constant a1, b1, a2, and b2. If we use the relations b1 and b2 that we found for our vibration modes, we can have the expressions written in this form over here, and as you recall, x1 will be the square root of a1 squared plus b1 squared. Therefore, that's this square root over here give us this expression x1. And the phase angle will be inverse tangent of b1 over a1. Similarly, x2 will be the square root of a2 squared b2 squared. 
and the phase angle phi2 will be the inverse tangent of b2 over a2. In summary, the steps to find the free vibration response using generalized coordinates, that's the method one for an um damp spring mass system, are the following. First, we write our equation of motion in matrix form, and then we have the mass matrix and the stiffness matrix. We have our vector of generalized coordinates and we have our vector for the external forces that for free vibration this vector is going to be equals to zero. The second step is finding the eigenvalues or natural frequency of the system and for that we solve the determinant the stiffness matrix minus lambda the mass matrix and that's equals to zero. That leads us for a two degree of freedom system, a quadratic polynomial that give us two solutions. The solutions are ordered from less to greater. For each of these solutions, we introduce this value over here and find the vibration modes, or what is the same is the eigenvector of the system. Remember that we find a relationship between these two variables and that means how the in the vibration mode one, that's how one must move respect to the other one, or how these coordinates move respect to this coordinate. And that gives us a vector that we can write in this form, which is our first vibration mode, which is related to the first natural frequency, and this is the second vibration mode, which is related to the second natural frequency. Finally, to find the response of the system in generalized coordinates, we apply this equation right here, where a1, b1, a2, and b2 are function of the initial condition.